Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're going to be making a card with just my type and just my type 2, um, two Lawn Fawn sets. Um, and right now I'm starting off with some October afternoon paper and a 4x4 card base. And I'm going to adhere that paper to the front of the card. I like it saves pattern paper to just adhere it to the front of the card instead of making an entire card out of your pattern paper. So I'm just putting adhesive on the back with um, my ATG gun and uh, and right now you're going to see I'm going to use the corner of the score pal but you could use any corner even the corner in your door um, to do this and I just am going to line up the card I always check to make sure the bottom is actually the bottom because um, I have it here my pattern paper upside down before and this one has tuck so it actually matter and I just fit the card in the corner and then the paper in the corner and it lines up perfectly um, so it's really good for me that does stuff crookedly. Um, right now I have out uh, antique linen distress ink and vintage photo distress ink and um, I have a couple of these ink blending tools because like these colors I use all the time so I have a foam pad on one of them for them no matter what. And right now I'm just taking antique linen and just distressing the edges of this paper which is already a little bit distressed but I wanted a little more definition around the edge. And I'm just flicking that foam as you can tell I'm doing it really fast. I'm not trying to make it perfect I'm just flicking it across the paper. Um, it's actually really fun. It's kind of therapeutic. And right now I've cut a piece that's a three and three quarters square that's going to go over the front and that's the piece that we're going to be stamping and doing all our stuff on. But before we start stamping, I'm going to actually distress it now because sometimes with some inks you might smear them, which I've done before. Um, and so uh, I'm just distressing it now, that way that part's already done and I kind of have the look that I'm going for as I'm stamping. So just taking some of that antique linen and now the vintage photo um, is since it's darker a lot of times I don't put the ink back on right away I just use what's left on there um, just for a, a, like a little subtle edge on the border and I just that's just so that it pops off the pattern paper um, a little more versus just blending in is to have that darker edge around. So uh, that's that part and uh, let's see, now we're going to move on to actually stamping. So there's the typewriter from Just My Type. And what I wanted to go over is the different positions. Um, there's no wrong in art, so you can do it any position. Some people like to do it crooked that way, um, where the typewriter is lined up with the bottom, um, which looks really cool. Um, then you can also do it um, you know, even more crooked to kind of look like the paper's coming out, like kind of flowing off the page. What I, my preference is, is to line the top of the paper up with the top of my cardstock. That's just what I like to do. Some people have asked me, so I thought I would let you guys know. Um, so I take that top of the paper, line it up with the top of the cardstock or whatever I happen to be stamping on, and do that. So right now I'm just stamping. And you'll see I'm just making sure there's pressure towards the middle since it's a bigger stamp. And uh, now we're going to stamp again on a white piece of cardstock and uh, just fast forwarding a bit there um, and that's because I want to do some Copic coloring and some paper piecing but the first thing we need to do is add our message so I'm using um, did you get the memo which is a sentiment from just my type 2 and I'm just gonna stamp that on uh, my paper um, one recommendation I have for you guys is um, I'm stamping on the score pile here because the blue looks better than my white desk with the video but I, I like to stamp on a firm surface I don't I don't like to stamp on the on the score pile because it kind of gives in the middle and sometimes I don't get a great impression. Um, so that's just a, my own personal preference. Other people have different one. Um, oh, I put a little green thing in my hair so you guys would have something more fun to look at. <laughs> okay, so now I have out my Copics. I am not a Copic, Copic expert. I am just doing whatever that's fun. So don't, uh, I'm going to fast forward a lot of it because I don't want you guys to think I'm doing anything correct. Um, <laughs> so I'm just highlighting some of the edges with a darker color and then I'm going to go in and blend it back with the lighter color. Um, and then you can see I'm just kind of, you know, adding that color in. And I really uh, just like this color for a typewriter because it looks really vintage to me. Uh, and then I'm going to take this gray marker and you're going to see this is the wrong end. And one way to remember is that gray strip is the end with the brush point and I always forget. Anyways, uh, so I'm just coloring the little keys in with the gray marker. And then I'm filling in the also the type pad there, uh, not type pad. What is that space bar? <laughs> and then I'm going to color in the um, outside 
uh, keys on my actual piece where it's going to be covered because I'm not going to cut those out. Um, I'm just going to have them colored on there. So right now I'm adding antique linen distress ink to the typewriter to age it, especially the paper part, because um, I want it to match the card, and if it was stark white, then it wouldn't match. But I'm going right over the Copic coloring too, um, and this memento ink doesn't bleed with the distress ink when you blend it. So I'm just kind of going over before I cut it out. Um, it's easier before you cut it out, because then you have some space to work with. So now I'm going to cut out, and what I'm doing is all the hard parts, like the swirly legs and all that, I'm just cutting those off, because uh, I'm going to put it right over, you'll see later, the image that we stamped before. So there's my cutout piece, and uh, I'm going to use my Copic marker and go around the edges. I've, I've done this before in a video. Um, just to, I think it finishes off the image, especially it kind of covers up those little mistakes that we make. So I have just my type out, just my type 2 out again, and I'm going to spell out um, dot 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 I heart you. Um, on this little block. So I'm just getting out the bits. I'm just going to fast forward and you can see there the dot 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 I heart you. And so I really like it but I want the heart to be a different color. So I'm removing the heart but I used it as a placer so I knew where to place the U um, when I was spelling it out. And I'm just going to use the memento ink again so it matches you know the black ink we've used the whole time. And, and I'm going to stamp that. And I don't know why it's what I must have been thinking about something there. Uh, a lot of times, too, I have my computer next to me and I'm checking email when I make these videos or when I'm making cards. So I'm just stamping the I heart you. And uh, I really had to look over to make sure that it was straight along the edge. So there's that part. And then now I'm going to get the little heart out. And I'm going to use some Versa Magic um, Red Magic ink. It's kind of it's a chalk ink. It takes a little bit longer to dry than the fluid chalk ink, but I really like it, too. Um, and they have these little dew drops, which are really cute. You're going to see the shape. Um, so, and I really like this red color, um, red magic indeed. Um, I just think it's like, it just pops. It's just really pretty. And in that October afternoon text paper, there's a little bit of red in it. And that's why I decided to use red, not just because hearts are red, but also because, you know, I think it looks so cool. So there's my heart. And, uh, and now we're ready to go to actually put the piece, um, over the top. So I'm going to add a bunch of foam adhesive, not super high foam adhesive, kind of the lower... Um, you know, not the super popped up, but kind of a lower popped up, because I don't want it like totally coming off the page. Um, and I'm just, I just added some extra. I realized I missed a spot with the Copic marker earlier, so I just did that. And um, and I had to lean over because this is you have to really you know line it up. The easiest way to line it up is to line up the like the two edges on the side, and then that'll kind of line up the rest of it for you when you're when you're either paper piecing this or like coloring this the way I did. Um, so you can see it's just like a subtle dimension. And, um, and I just leave those other two keys that are off the side off and, and the little swirly legs off, and it, I think it looks great that way. So right now I'm just going to add foam adhesive to the back, and, uh, and that's to just pop it up on the card. And now I'm using a little bit of a thicker foam adhesive because I want it to kind of have a little more presence. So there's my text paper, and uh, we're just going to cover it right up. And the cool thing is you can do this with any text paper, or you can even make your own by stamping sentiment stamps and make your own text paper for the background, which could be really fun. There's my cool little green hair clip. Um, <laughs> and there's, uh, there's the card. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Um, make sure to head over my, to my blog to see the whole thing, and, uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Oh, wait. I'm not buying yet. We have some, I have some pictures here. So there's the, I, I heart you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so silly. And there's the actual card. So thank you so much again. Bye. Bye.